Chapter 5, basics, uh, today I come to you with a message which is concerned with the, uh, the second temptation that Jesus Christ faced it. According to the book of Matthew is when we are just doing Bible study. We'll be doing Bible studies and our other lessons uh, every day through this uh, YouTube channel. So I remind you to pray and uh, to pay attention to share the videos so that you can understand a lot from the Bible. Uh, what we are studying today is on uh, the second temptation when the devil killed Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ won the temptation. Let us have the word of prayer. Father, help us today when we are want to read and uh, study and understand the word. I hope the person who is listening and who is watching that they may all understand your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we come here when we find the second temptation, which is uh, from verse 5. Yesterday we learned about the first temptation, about the issue of t changing the world, uh, the, uh, the stones into the, the bread. And the, topic, the basic uh, temptation of the devil was focused on creating doubts in Jesus Christ. And so now we got the second temptation, which is verse 5. And six. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and sets him on the pinnacle of the temple. He have two parts that we need to study, and uh, just small. We won't uh, concentrate on these things because we want to cover the emphasis. What was the emphasis of the lighter? Why did the Matthew write this part? Because not all uh, writers. Uh, uh, John did not write about this one and Mark gave only introduction that Jesus went to, to be tempted but did not explain everything uh, as uh, Luke and, uh, and, and and Matthew concerning the temptation of Jesus Christ. So when we go here we find that the devil take, uh, took Jesus Christ. He carried him. He took him. The word that is used in some of the manuscript is palam, uh, palambane uh, which is uh, in, in meaning associate with. So he killed him. Some may think that maybe he was killed in the spirit, like at the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 1, when Ezekiel was killed, even other prophets like Daniel carried uh, in the spirit. John himself carried in the spirit to certain praise. But here he was carried. We can compare this being carried, that, that is, it was a body, he was carried in the body. Like uh, what we see, uh, what happened to Philip, uh, Philip, he was carried by the Holy Spirit. So here to be carried by the devil means that the devil because of the spirit and Jesus Christ was body. So it was possible for him to be carried because he, he got himself the position where he was weak and allowed the devil to use all the power that he can use to make Jesus sin. Because Jesus Christ not to live the life to have excuses of sin that that is trying to avoid a certain environment because it will lead him to sin. But he put himself so close to God that the devil could do anything, but he missed one point to make Jesus distrust his father. So uh, he carried him to the temple and he set him on the pinnacle of the temple. He carried him to the city or the city. So he was in the wilderness. So he carried him uh, the distance and to the city and then to the holy uh, temple on the pinnacle, which is assumed to be 90 meters long. It is so long that it was so long that standing there, uh, looking down, you could feel dizziness. And so he took him there. And the building of that moment was not like that, uh, that we're building now. It was just like a flat, flat top because uh, of avoiding people to fall down and so verse 6 and, the, uh, and he said unto him if thou be the son of God cast thyself for it is written he shall give his angel charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone he quote the book of Psalm chapter 91 verse uh, 11 and 12 that's the simple verse that Satan used it here we want to find something which is very important on the temptation of Jesus Christ the first one 
is uh, insinuating doubts, making Jesus Christ to doubt God, uh, to doubt his relationship to God. That if thou be the Son of God, means even the, the, to doubt even the assurance that he got after baptism and all his life, to doubt that maybe I'm not Jesus. Or to doubt to make him to prove himself before men because he lead maybe to people to trust him. But Jesus did not want to show his power. But also it did not want, Jesus Christ did not want to, to do something that he was not directed by God to do. Uh, like sometimes we find ourselves that we are doing things which are, uh, God has not told us to do, but because we have a relationship with God, we can do whatever what we want. And sometimes Satan is the one who drives us to do things which are not light before the Lord. And uh, so the focus of Matthew here, so the focus of Matthew was the battle uh, on the kingdom, uh, between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil, was to show not how to overcome, but Matthew was showing how Jesus Christ overcame, how he was tested like human being to show that he was a Messiah, that his history was like this. So this is to tell us that Jesus Christ overcame on our behalf. He faced the challenges, but it shows us that that Jesus Christ put his trust in the word of God. Though Satan used the word of God, but he omitted certain parts. So this gives us to understand that every word in the scripture is useful for our spiritual stability. So we not, do not need to cut some passages to support our ideas or to work with the certain passages. We need to give ourselves to the word of God completely. Surrendering our life and walking with God like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ trusted the Father on all his life. So this temptation gives us that we should not test the Lord. Where we, are, we should not tempt the Lord. Like Israelites in the book of uh, Exodus 17.7, Moses said that they tempted God to see if God was with them. So we should not do things to test if God is with us. We should have faith, uh, faith of believing that God is with us and work with the promises that he has given us and look back on the, on the experience that we have with God and trust in his providence. Whenever we are facing challenges, we should not try to force, uh, to force solutions by using our own method but trusting in the Lord. Sometimes Satan may take us up on the pinnacle and show that we need to do something stupid. Because we are sons of God, God will protect us. You have been married, and then God tells you you have to respect your marriage, and you are trying to do to go against, to have side chick, or to do something evil, committing adultery, while you are a Christian, thinking that, God is going to protect you when you're going to, protect, uh, to do to commit adultery. You have given yourself to Jesus Christ, and then Satan is tempting you to drive at high speed, like 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 one, and there's no reason. And then you think God is going to protect you. Yes, He can protect you if there is a reason too. But He loves us, my friend. I don't want to make a mistake about this one because we have made a lot of mistakes, and God has protected us. His love towards us is so huge. So we need to trust his word and trust his love. May God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.